Hello and welcome to the Life Waves Practice and today's live stream. It's lovely to see you all here. My name is Sarah Bainbridge and I'm passionate about helping you achieve total well-being in our modern world. So hello to you all that are here and if you're listening to this on the replay, hello to you too. It's lovely to have you here and I'm glad that you've taken the time to have a look at this. Please do, if you're looking at the replay, uh, put your comments and questions in the comments box below and I will get back to you. I will answer you. So, as I said, I'm passionate about helping you achieve total well-being in our modern world. And because of this, today I want to share with you my top health tip for 2017. And that's all about stress. So I think we're all aware of stress in that too much to do, too little time type thing. And it really is very much a thing that's talked about in health a lot these days. But today I want to talk to you about stress in that way, but also other things in our environment in your life that could be causing you stress and that you may not be so aware of. So we're going to have a talk about that. We're going to talk about the effect that it does have on your health and why it is a problem. And we're also going to talk about what you can do about it too. Um, I'm going to tell you as much as I can in the time that we've got available today. But if you do want to know more, then do grab yourself a copy of my free ebook, Back to Calm, Three Ways to Create a Calm and Happy Life. Um, share a lot more in there. Lots of nice, help, helpful hints and tips. My favourite things that I like to do. So do grab yourself a copy. I was hoping to put the link uh, in the comments box below today but technology being what it is unfortunately I can't so I will put it in when I finish so do go and have a look at that um, so just to say hello to Wenna and to Sharon it's lovely to see you um, and lovely that you could be here at this time so as I said we're going to talk about stress today now maybe when I said that your heart sank a little bit because it is the thing that's used almost as an excuse for everything these days, isn't it? So if you have symptoms that nobody seems to be able to get to the bottom of, um, you know, maybe gone to the doctors, had lots of tests, nothing seems to be coming back. One of the things that they will say to you these days a lot is, well, you're stressed. It's stress. And I know how frustrating that can be when you're in that position. The exact same thing happened to me uh, several years ago, many years ago, when I was poorly, couldn't find anything wrong, I felt really dreadful and the only explanation that they could come up with was that it was stress. So they, it's all in your head and you just need to relax. And that in itself is stressful because you know that there's more going on than the stress. Having said all of that, stress does play a huge part. So the thing with stress is that it sets up the environment, the conditions in you that allow other things to come along, allow other things to start to go wrong. So even though it's not the be all and end all for your health, it is an important aspect and it is something that you really need to do something about if you're going to really address health issues and achieve that total well-being. Achieving health that the us and our bodies are just complex things and you can never just do one thing it doesn't work like that so you don't have one thing that causes another that causes another and that's it we're way too complex for that so really to achieve good health you need to be addressing all sorts of different things in your life and as i say stress is one of the key ones so a little bit about stress it's very much a modern day condition. Our lives are very stressful, much more stressful than they were. So that too much to do, too little time. We're all on the go all the time. Our lives are stressful. Um, you know, everything that we do, we, we're connected all the time. We're bombarded with information all the time. There's such an expectation that you're out there doing things all the time. And if you're not, you're some sort of failure. A real lot of pressure that's put on us. So as, as I say, I think we're all aware of that type of stress. However, that's our lives creating like a psychological stress with us. But actually the environment that we live in at the moment also creates stress. And this is probably the area that you're not so familiar with, you're not so aware of, but it's really important that you do think about it. So 
chemicals, toxins in our environment, they stress our system. So just to give you an idea, since the late um, 1940s, about 1949, there's been around about 45,000 new chemicals introduced into our lives, our daily lives. That's a lot for our systems to deal with. We don't evolve quick enough to deal with that. So all this stuff is being bombarded and our systems have to deal with it. Um, again, to give you another idea of just how much of a problem that is, they did a survey, a study on newborn babies a few years back, and they found that on average, a newborn baby had 150 chemicals in their bodies when they were born that shouldn't be there. So those were ones that they picked up from mum before they ever started to collect any of their own. So you can start to see how much of an impact those chemicals and toxins in our environment are starting to have on us. We also get stress from things like EMFs, so um, electromagnetic frequencies, which we're surrounded by all the time. Wireless networks, mobile phones, um, even the technology that I'm using to talk to you today is a source of that. And again, our systems aren't designed to deal with it, so it just stresses us even more. So, we have this stress in our environment. But why is it a problem for us? What do we need to do about it? Well, let's have a look at the, the technicalities of it, really, how we respond to stress. So our bodies naturally have a stress response. In fact, every living creature, every living organism on the earth has a stress response because that's how we survive. So it was developed for us to keep us safe, to help us survive. So we've all heard of the fight or flight type thing. So our ancestors, thousands of years ago, developed this so that when they came face to face with that saber-toothed tiger or the hairy mammoth, a thing clicked in as to whether they were going to stand and fight that or whether they were going to flight. So it's re actually, it's really important, it keeps us safe. Now, what you're probably not aware of is that the body actually uses a similar process internally to deal with stress. So it goes through a similar sort of thing to deal with pathogens such as bacteria, viruses, parasites, those chemicals that we were talking about, and the EMFs and, and other sources of stress in our environment. So all those disturbances internally, it uses a similar stress response. So what is that stress response? What happens? Well, you've come face to face with this saber-toothed tiger. You're going to have to do something. You're going to have to fight it or you're going to have to run away. So the body kicks in with a process to enable you to do either of those things. So your heart rate quickens. Your blood starts pumping around your system so that you can start to take action quickly. Your blood is, di is diverted from the digestive system to your muscles. Because let's face it, if you're about to become something's last meal, digesting your last meal is actually the least of your worries. So that's not important anymore. It's getting the blood to the muscles so that you can fight or flight. The blood also drains away from this part of the brain too. So this is where you do all your logical thinking. But again, you've got two choices. You don't need to stand there and analyse what it is that you want to do. You just want to do something. So all the blood drains away from here. Now, this is great because that's, that's what it was doing. So if you look at how we used to react all those thousands of years ago and how many animals and creatures in nature still react, they come across that stress. They set into motion that stress response. They do something, so they run away or they fight, and then it goes. So you get this balance between the stress and the relax and the stress and the relax. Brilliant. The problem is we don't get that anymore. So just to take that a little step further, as I said, the body reacts to stresses internally in the same way. So it sets in process and motion. If it comes across a pathogen or toxicity or something that isn't right, and needs dealing with, it'll set off a process. So it'll send enzymes and chemicals to the site of disturbance to destroy the intruder. And then it'll kick into that rest period where it does all the healing side of it. So that's actually an inflammatory process. And again, you've probably heard how if you've got chronic stress, somebody's chronically stressed, they often have chronic inflammation as well. The two go together. And that's why, because actually it's the same process. It has the same triggers in a way. So as I said, that's fine while everything is working as it should. So you have that period of stress and then you go into the period of relaxation. However, 
modern day life doesn't work like that anymore. So I don't know about you, but I certainly haven't come across any woolly mammoths recently. Stresses these days are a different type. So the difficult boss, the queue in the supermarket, the traffic jam, running a family, just day to day life is stressful. So all those things that we talked about before, being bombarded with information, expected to be connected all the time, expected to be available all the time. These are stresses that are on us. Now, unlike meeting that woolly mammoth, we can't run. It doesn't go away. It's just there. We can't expend the stress response that we've built up. So all that happens is that that just continues. You're constantly stressed. You're never going to relax or not fully into relaxed. And that's where the problems start. So instead of doing a nice, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but a nice curvy, stress, relax, stress, relax. What you tend to find is that you go into super stress and because the body can't maintain that for a long time, so the hormones, for instance, associated with stress, the adrenaline and the cortisol, we can't store those. Hi, Elizabeth, nice to see you. We can't store those hormones. The body's got to keep producing them all the time. So it'll keep producing, keep producing, keep producing, and then eventually it'll get exhausted and it'll crash. So again, you're maybe quite familiar with this super stressed crash stress crash so you get this type of thing going on again i don't know if you can see on the screen that you get slightly exaggerated or very exaggerated response eventually what happens is that it crashes and it doesn't come back it's just exhausted your body is exhausted all those processes that it's doing is exhausted and that's when you get the burnout and the crash so just to go back to some of the physical things around that, you know, if you're constantly diverting blood away from the digestive system, you're not digesting things, you're not getting your nutrients properly. If you've got your blood away from your brain, that's not working properly. So, you know, you get that brain fog with a lot of stress. You know, there's so much going on. You just can't think straight. And that's because the blood's drained away. Your immune system becomes weakened. And as I say, you get that crash situation. None of that is good for your health, as I'm sure you can imagine. The other aspect, of course, is that when that crashes, your body can't respond to pathogens properly either. So it's not responding to the stress, but it's not responding to the pathogens. So therefore, because your immune system is weakened as well, these things get a hold. And that's how you get the symptoms. So stress sets up that environment that allows other things to start to go wrong. So although you need to deal with those other things that are going wrong, you also need to deal with the reason as to why they were allowed to in the first place. And, and just to, to pick up on, on a comment from Elizabeth, she said, yes, totally get the stress of never shutting off from technology. We're all bad at it, aren't we, Elizabeth? Absolutely. With the best will in the world, you're always just checking your email or your Facebook page or something. And obviously, for the younger generations, my son's 15, it's just part of their lives. That's what they're growing up with. But even though they're used to it in that way, their physical bodies aren't because we don't evolve quick enough to deal with it. So, as I say, that's why stress is such an issue and why you need to do something about it. Um, so what can you do about it? Well, in my view, there's three key steps. Um, and these are the ones that I go through in the free ebook. So as, as I say, if you want to have a little bit more information about them, then, then do go and get your copy. I'm really passionate about sharing this with people because it's, it, I feel it's a really, really important thing that we need to sort out in our lives, but really hard to do, particularly if you're stressed. So three key steps that you need to take. The first one is that you need to look at your life and find out where those stresses are. It seems pretty obvious, doesn't it, really? But it's probably not one of those things that we've actually thought about doing. Now, awareness is key. So simply by being on this live stream or listening to the replay, hearing me talk about stress, becoming a little bit more aware of what it's doing to your system, physically, how it's affecting your health in a little bit more detail, other areas where it might be coming from as well in your life, 
simply by being aware subconsciously it will trigger something so that's that's a huge first step and you will improve your stress levels simply because you've listened today isn't that good um, so you become aware of those stress levels and you'll start to see in your life that you're starting to get stressed and because you know what it does to you you're more likely to do that oh do I really want to go there do I really want this to affect my health like that and you'll start to identify where those things are and you'll start to do something about it so really take some time you deserve it you deserve to take five or ten minutes out of your day sit back with a cup of tea or whatever you want a glass of water and just think about where stress is occurring in your life how it's making you feel what's happening as a result of it so do you find you have a stressful day and you come home with a headache um, you don't sleep properly digestion feels a little bit off just start to make those connections start to identify where in your life you've got that stress and what you can do about it and as I say I'm going to I give you one of my favorite places one of as far as I'm concerned one of the key starting points for this in the ebook so do go and have a look um, I can't go into it into detail today but but do go and have a look at that so the key with this is that you only look at one thing at a time we, we want to be reducing stress not creating more stress by trying to deal with the stress that you have I mean that's pointless isn't it so deal with one thing at a time sort that one thing out it doesn't have to be a huge thing just a small thing and what you'll find is that as you start to settle stress in one area of your life it's a little bit like a pack of cards you start to feel a little bit clearer in your mind a little bit calmer a little bit more settled and other things will, will miraculously start to sort themselves out or you'll see a way an easier way of sorting them out so how good is that so that's step one step two is finding your quick fixes so even though you're dealing with the underlying stress in your life we're human and we live in the modern world and life is as it is so there will be things that come along that stress you it just happens and don't beat yourself up about it that is just what happens so your quick fixes are those things that you can do there and then instantly. The moment that you feel yourself getting a little bit stressed, you can do to, to dissipate that stress, to bring it down. Because what we don't want to do is undo all the good that you're doing by, by taking the other step, by, by allowing it to escalate and get stressed. Now, again, you have to find something that suits you. So for some people like to meditate, some people like to do some deep breathing. If you're into EFT tapping, fantastic way to very quickly and very unobtrusively bring your stress down lots of different things and again I share my favorite one in the e book but but no doubt you'll have your own now the key to success in this step is practice 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 the more you use your instant quick fix or more than one if you want the better it will work the more effective it'll be and the more instinctively you'll do it so you won't have to think about it you'll just do it so step three is getting a helping hand a natural helping hand so we all need a little bit of a helping hand from time to time don't we we're, we're not alone it's always nice to have a little bit of help and dealing with your stress is no different so when you're feeling stressed and it all feels just a little bit too much rather than reaching for that extra glass of wine or that nice piece of chocolate cake all the time try and use a natural helping hand because not only will it be helping your health but and not sorry your stress but it'll also be helping your health so you, you it's win-win situation you know how good is that and again it's finding what works for you so there's lots of different things that you can look at and a combination of different things so you can look at diet you can look at supplements and herbal remedies that help I personally am a real favorite of flower remedies and I know several people who are watching now certainly are lots and lots of things that you can do with that um, essential oils as again that's a really lovely natural way just to help you along in life so have a think about those areas investigate a little bit as I say again in my ebook I, I share my favorite one but you'll have your own favorites too so I hope this has helped a little bit um, sadly we're running out of time if you do have any comments or questions 
you know, do put them in the box. I, I do realise that once I get talking, I chatter away, and those of you who know me will know that once I get into a subject I like, I will talk about it. But I really am passionate about doing something about this. And although it seems quite difficult to do actually with that little bit of help and support and a step-by-step -step approach and a little bit of guidance it actually is something that you can do quite easily you don't have to be superwoman you don't have to be the perfect person you can deal with this and believe you me your body and your health will love you for it so when has just said thank you Sarah very helpful my pleasure when I hope it helped so do go and have a look at the ebook um, do put any comments or questions if there's anything that you think of or if you're watching the replay if there's anything that you like to know do put those in the uh, comment box below uh, and I will get back to you and all that's left to say really is that I wish you um, a very healthy and stress-free new year and hopefully I'll see you soon okay bye